there is only one thing I want to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. And before we get started on our story, I need you to do something for me. Imagine a major US city like Chicago, Dallas, Phoenix, or San Diego. Imagine a major US city with a population of around one and a half to two and a half million people. Now imagine what that city would look like if 450,000 people were gone, or if 450,000 people were gradually killed over a course of five years. Now if the United States had lost this many innocent lives, it would be considered a global tragedy. And that significant amount of loss of life would have a significant effect on the country. Well, unfortunately, that is the reality for people in the country of Syria. Over the course of a five-year civil war, 450,000 innocent people have been killed. 50,000 of those were children. 50,000 lives that will never get to grow up let alone the thousands more children still suffering as refugees and living in traumatic means. Now the death toll got so high that the UN decided to stop counting the deaths in 2014 due to the accuracy of the actual number. The population of Syria was around 22.85 million at one time, with the capital city of Aleppo with a population of 2.3 million. Now back in 2011, Rebel forces and Assad or pro-government forces clashed to mark the beginning of a civil war. During this civil war, over 4 million people have registered as a refugee, and over 50% of those registered refugees are under the age of 18. Now these statistics are the results of continuous firefights and airstrikes that have been unforgiving on fighters and on the innocent bystanders. There has been a number of reports of the use of chemical weapons, which is against international law. Human Rights Watch has also documented hard evidence that Russian and pro-government forces have used incendiary weapons against the rebels and on civilian structures like a hospital, which ended up completely burning to the ground. Now the use of incendiary weapons, like chemical weapons, is also against international law. There is also footage of a bomb being dropped by Russian-backed pro-government forces on a civilian school complex while school was in session. Now you may think that it could have been an accident, where they thought the school complex could have been a military target. But then a second bomb was dropped on the same complex while students and teachers were already running for cover or to help others from the first blast. Now just last week, according to multiple reports, soldiers allegedly from the Assad regime were taking men, women, and children out of their homes in an, in an eastern Aleppo neighborhood and executing them in the streets. 82 executions were reported. Now the fall of eastern Aleppo to government forces shifts the focus on the last rebel bastion, Idlib. The province west of Aleppo is under control of an Al-Qaeda affiliate, the Fatah al-Sham, formerly known as al-Nusra. As per the figures released by Institute for the Study of War, the province has as many as 50,000 fighters who came together, came together under the Fatah al-Sham front. Now the population of Idlib is said to be one and a half million people, which continues to rise after the fall of eastern Aleppo. Identifying which city comes next depends on which city contains the largest number of terrorists and which city provides other countries with the opportunity to support them logistically, Assad told Russian media outlets in an interview in Damascus on December 14, 2016, just a few days ago. Now, just a couple days ago, a ceasefire was brokered for Aleppo and people are being allowed to leave. Now, the ceasefire, though, hangs by a thread, even as civilians and rebels continue evacuating the city, amid burning buses and attacks on convoys, which have halted the process more than once. Now, this, has, this whole Syrian conflict, ladies and gentlemen, has really affected millions and millions of people, not just hundreds of thousands, millions of people and millions of children. 
and we're sitting here in the West saying, what can we do? I can't do anything. It doesn't affect me. I'm not in Syria. I'm not in the Middle East. I'm not in the military. What can I do? There's a couple things you can do, ladies and gentlemen. You can help put pressure on the UN Security Council to take action, to take more action in Syria. You, and that's a little hard to do, but you can do that if you want to be a sort of troll on Twitter to some of these representatives at the United Nations. But other things you can do is you can go to various websites like SaveTheChildren.org or UNICEFUSA.org or USAID.com. Those are three websites that you can visit and help contribute to help Syrian refugees. And I encourage you to do so, ladies and gentlemen. Civil wars, whether they're in the Middle East, the West, the North, the South, wherever they are, aren't a good thing for any country. However, this one in particular was, was horrible, was horrific, was atrocious. Why? Because international law after international law was violated and human rights were ignored almost completely. Chemical weapons were used, incendiary weapons were used, bombings of civilian infrastructures occurred, a number of this, arbitrary detentions, extrajudicial executions, all of this happened during this civil war. And though civil wars aren't good and people don't want war, sometimes civil wars are necessary. But when you go about going to war, you need to to stick to international law and human rights and that is exactly what the Assad regime by in Russian backed forces did not do they continued to violate international law and they continued to abuse human rights so this is why this civil war should gain global attention because Assad and the Russian backed forces did it in a way that was internationally and morally wrong. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, the, I'll give you these websites if you're sitting here saying, well, what can I do? How can I help? Please go to these websites, savethechildren.org, unicefusa.org, or usaid.com. Again, those are three websites you can go and help contribute to Syrian refugee, refugees, to the bettering of Syrian refugees. There are millions and millions of children out there that need your help. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want any information on the Syrian conflict, it is main news right now, and I encourage you to check it out from multiple sources. But then again, we, you got to figure out which sources are reliable. The Washington Post, NBC, BBC, the NATO website, Interpol, there's legitimate websites you can go to and get serious news updates that you know are real and aren't these fake updates from these false news sites so again check your sources and definitely look into the syrian conflict ladies and gentlemen this is a civil war that should be recorded for the books not only for the number of people who have died but for the way it was conducted but thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen that does it for the show today. I was your host, Bryce Dolan, and you were watching a video from your Global Institute for Democracy and Strategic Studies. Mm -hmm.